What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about the secret behind Norway's dominance in the Winter Olympics. I had no idea that Norway was so dominant in the Winter Olympics, that they had so many medals, gold medals, like, and it's not even really that close. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kind of becoming aware of this for the first time. So I pulled up a couple of videos that might help explain exactly how winning Norway is and, and why. Why is Norway so good? How do they have so many world-class Olympic athletes that compete and win on the world stage? How is that possible? Norway isn't even that big, you know? Anyway, Americans, because of the climate in America, the weather and the lack of mountains and snow, Americans really aren't keeping up with winter sport in general just because we can't really practice it or play it. So we honestly have to wait for the Winter Olympics every four years to come around. And then we see it on TV and, and Americans were like, oh yeah, that's really awesome. That's amazing. I forgot about that. But I'm guessing it's probably a pretty big part of the Norwegian culture, right? Anyway, I'm, I'm very interested to learn more about this because this is kind of amazing. Uh, so let's take a look. The Norwegian team looks fantastic Such out there. Such is the raw power of this Norwegian a team. A demonstrative performance by the a Norwegians. remarkable victory from Nor- There sure are, you know, this is, right off the bat, there are so many more winter sports than I even realized. There's skiing, of course, which I think skiing was like invented in Norway. So that kind of makes sense, even though it's still amazing. But there's cross-country skiing, and the biathlon where you're shooting, and skiing, and ski there's skating, and there's uh, so many winter sports. Is Norway good at all of them? Is that possible? Back on the top tier of the podium. Once again, at these Olympic Winter Games, Norway is crossing the finish line on top. Norway right. with the goal. Well, wh when was this made? This was made 2022, so... This is from Beijing 2022. So Norway is still, right now, uh, absolutely dominating Winter Olympics uh, very recently as well. It's gold and glory. The first team to become three times Norway, winners. the most decorated nation. A Scandinavian country with just five and a half million people and an Olympic team less than half the size of Team USA is dominating yeah. the medal count, breaking the record they set for most Olympic gold medals ever won by a single nation at a Winter Olympics. It's a oh, Norway just broke the record for most Olympic medals at a single Olympics, a Winter Olympics. Again, they broke their <laughs> they they broke their own record. How it that is that is uh that's how you do it. It's our national sport, and for sure, everybody is born with skis on their feet. But beyond the plentiful hmm. snow and cold weather, the Norwegian team members we met say their gold rush springs from what Americans might call an unconventional approach to youth sports. Well, it's pretty obvious that because Norway has access to cold weather, winter climate, and snow, this really is something that you can introduce to the youth, to the young kids in Norway, so they can, that's how most world-class athletes are, are made, because they start very young, so I can see where Norway as a country is very conducive to creating winter sport athletes, but still, that doesn't, <laughs> that, that, that doesn't explain how they're so incredibly dominant though we never thought of it as training we were out with the family and we went for skiing and our main goal was to get that uh, piece of chocolate the <laughs> philosophy is simple be a kid and have fun we have a really wow. good winter in norway and uh, we ski all the time <laughs> even if i didn't compete i was uh, skiing with my family and i think that's a typical norwegian family that is so important that the Norwegian athletes feel like they love the sport and it's not being 
forced on them. That's just fundamentally so important. If you're trying to have, get kids to enjoy it, they're going to keep doing it if they genuinely enjoy it and they don't see it as work. And it's fun. That is such a good philosophy for Norway to have. To get probably a lot of young kids interested as well. Norwegians do not rank or keep score for children 12 and under. We don't keep record. It's actually illegal. You get expelled from the Federation if you keep record of the... Wow. Tour over. They don't even keep score. You, you're not allowed to keep score for 12 and under. That is so good, man. That is so smart. Just, it's all for the love of the sport. When you're a kid, especially when you're 12 and younger, they're just like, do it, enjoy it, don't worry about winning, just enjoy it. That is so good. Ba is the head of Norway's storied athletic development program. I think it's easier to focus on development and not so much on short-sighted results. Mm. The philosophy behind it is actually to ask the kids what's in it for them. And oh. Ask the, uh, the parents. <laughs> <laughs> How much of a difference? This is so smart. Uh, for creating long-term athletes that love what they're doing. I feel like this is the opposite of how America does it. America and other places like China are so obsessed with getting the kids at a very young age to just do the sport all day, every day, no matter what, and make it the most important thing in their life. Life and death. But Norway is understands that when you're a child, if for any long-term success, you have to actually enjoy it. And uh, obviously it's worked out for them because they're, they're absolutely destroying every other country in Winter Olympics. For instance, parenting culture make? I think we, we shave off a lot of our talent because the kids get sick of their sport. Because uh -huh. they, they specialize too early. And, and Norway is doing a much better job of retaining that talent than we are. And yeah. as Norwegian athletes rise through the ranks, winning does matter a lot in elite training. We are an ambitious bunch. We really want to win medals. When we are at the Olympics, we are very focused. We are very professional. So we are not like playing around. Their record is as good as gold. Yeah, I understand that. Make sure you enjoy it as a kid. But to be a world-class athlete, to, to be able to defeat the best in the world uh, at Winter Olympics, you have to be very, very serious. So they know when to enjoy it, and Norway knows when to be serious about it, which is the perfect combination. Norway leads the all-time medal count in cross-country skiing, ski jumping, and Nordic combined. And it doesn't hurt that millions at home are glued to watching those races on TV. Yeah, I mean, America doesn't enjoys watching all of this on television. It's just that since we don't have winter sports here in the United States, it's never on television except every four years. But when it's on television, we're like, wow, that's amazing. That's so cool. So it is actually an awesome sport. Americans love this stuff. It's just it's not a part of our culture, so we never get to appreciate it. So, yeah, this is pretty cool. It's really, really huge, and everyone in Norway uh, watch it, and I think it's like you watching American football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A winning combination that keeps Norway on top. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they, they seemed really happy there as well. Like they have a good sense of humor about it. Okay, I have this other video called The Science Behind Norway's Winter Games Success. I'm hoping this tells me possibly more about the training and the science and the methods Norway has to train their athletes. Like, how are they so good? Is there a secret? Uh, like, well, I, I, ha I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> With Norway once again at the top of the Winter Olympic medal count, many are wondering what is the secret to the country's success? Yeah. Out of all the Winter Olympic Games ever held, Norway has placed among the top three in more than half of them, making it the most decorated Winter Games nation of all time. Joining me now is assistant professor... Hold on. I gotta look this up. Most Winter Olympic medals... Norway, 405. Then the next is United States with 330. 
It's not even close. Like, Norway isn't just winning in the medal count by a little bit. They are destroying the next uh, highest medal holder by, like, a hundred medals. It's, <laughs> that, that is ridiculous. Professor of Sports Science at the Norwegian University and Science... And plus, Norway, the United States has the second most, but the United States has 300 million people, and Norway has 5 million people. And they're winning. That is outrageous. That is incredible. Science and technology, Stig Arva Satter. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Uh, Norwegians seem to place uh, a real strong emphasis on outdoor living. Talk to me about the role of the of outdoor culture in raising successful athletes. Yeah. Well, I guess we have a tradition, a history for leisure activities, both organized and non-organized uh, activities, and. That is true. Compared to America, Norway, Norwegian people do seem to just enjoy the outdoors more. And they have a, such a beautiful country. They, they can enjoy it. They can take part in winter sport activity if they want. It's just this perfect place for that's so good for encouraging like great winter sport athletics. It's, it makes sense. And, uh... Actually, 80% of Norwegian children are a part of the organized sport in Norway. So wow. that's a quite large number. 8%. There's a lot to unpack there. Let, let's, let's look at regionally first, the, the Trondelag region of Norway. It seems to produce a disproportionately yep. large share of Olympic medal winners. Uh, the region generally... The Trondelag region contains 8% of Norway's population, but produces 20% of their Olympic medals. So if you are in the Trondelag region, <laughs> you, you have a really good chance of uh, producing one of Norway's Olympic medals. It produces about one-fifth of Norway's overall medals at any given Winter Games. What is it about that area, and why does it produce so many successful athletes? Yeah. Well, uh, there are a local uh, uh, town called Meråker, which is a, a rural area of uh, Trondheim, uh, where uh, actually many of the medalists uh, come from. I guess it's uh, quite a, a small part uh, of Norway where they have a good history and tradition for developing youth athletes. And uh, mm. I guess uh, many of the, the athletes see the traditions uh, on that parts of Norway. And Yeah, if they see a certain part of Norway having success, it's just going to attract more success, more people to go there and learn. I wonder if also the Norwegian athletes feel a, a big pressure to keep their country's tradition of winning going. You know, Norway has been so good at the Winter Olympics so much for so long now. There's probably a lot of motivation for the Norwegian people to, to keep that going. They're like, hey, this is kind of our thing. This is what we're good at. So it probably gets more and more people really excited about it. And uh, use that as motivation to become good athletes themselves. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that development for a little bit, because I was reading that many schools in Norway, they infuse sport into learning. But what's really interesting is they don't seem to place an emphasis on winning. So what is it about yeah. this sort of mode of, 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 of developing athletes that turns people into people who are able to win later on in life. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, we have some children's rights, actually, within sports, saying that uh, we don't uh, keep scores until the, the athletes are 13. And then you right. can think, uh, why not? Well, the point is that winning competitions isn't important in terms of development, because then you just have to compete against the bad uh, athletes. Uh, because yeah, yeah, this is such a smart system. Norway has. I've never heard of a system like this, where so much attention has, is given to, well, how do we make this fun and productive for children? And this, Norway has figured it out. Of course, you have to have a self-centered uh, development, so you should be uh, focusing on your own skills and try to develop them as best as possible. You know, there's such a breadth yeah. of, of um, and variety of sports at the Winter Olympics, and it seems that Norwegians tend to gravitate towards sports that other countries might not necessarily pay a lot of attention to. Oh? 
Absolutely. They're, they're, we have a focus on the winter sports, uh, quite small uh, sports, which, uh, of course, is smart uh, because then we <laughs> invest in sports we actually could be good at. So um, I think that's uh, uh, a good uh, uh, way to do it. Yeah, I'd like to know what Norway uh, specializes in, in the winter sports. I know they do a lot of skiing and uh, the skiing, the ski jump as well. Uh, lastly, Professor, uh, you know, there are a lot of countries out there that spend a lot of money trying to de develop uh, cultures around sport in order to win at the Olympics. Norway seems to have that secret to success. <laughs> if you had yeah. to boil it down into, in, into something that you could export to other countries, what would that secret to Olympic success be in Norway? Yeah. I think it's uh, our combination of both uh, mass sport and elite sport it, uh, is important. The, as we said, the, the investment in smaller sports could be uh, smart. We have a focus on the athletes uh, and the development of them, of building good environments for, uh, for young athletes. Uh, as I said, the, the late focus of winning. And uh, perhaps the last bit is that... Uh, Actually, there, there was uh, developed an organization of elite sport called Olympia Toppen. Uh, mm. So it sounds like Norway does a good job of incorporating athletics into school as well, giving kids an opportunity to take part in the winter athletics. And it sounds like they have a lot of Olympic development programs as well. Which is the knowledge base of the Norwegian uh, comparing uh, results between different sports so that we have a knowledge base of that. And actually, they were established because of the bad Olympics in Calgary in uh, 1988. So hmm. I guess you have you to thank for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Norway did badly at one Winter Olymp Olympics like 40 years ago. And they're like, okay, we need to create an entire organization so that doesn't happen again. <laughs> well, you're welcome, sir. And thank you to Norway for such great performances this year. We appreciate it. Professor, thanks for being here. Wow, that was interesting. That was very interesting. And I also have this video, this video here. What the secret behind Norway winning most Winter Olympic medals? We'll see if this has any more information. Oh, this is Norway's chief of mission at the Olympics. Uh, we are actually working with one of the key figures in the, in the black metal movement. We are uh, developing ideas for developing athletes and artists. They have oh. chosen their way of expressing themselves. That is quite uh, connected to the Viking blood, probably. Yeah. But when... <laughs> Norway just seems like a great place to uh, accept and grow your passion. Like, Norway is really into figuring out what kids and people's passion is and letting them grow it and being very helpful, but also being hands-off and just saying, hey, do your thing. Become the best you that you can be. That, that is so great. When you meet these uh, guys uh, outside the stage, they're very, very friendly and polite people. So they are more artists than, than Vikings. <laughs> Norway and China have been working together to develop winter sports. Okay. Norway also won the first gold medal in the 2022 Winter Olympics. Yeah, that was Therese Juha who won the first one in uh, duathlon for uh, cross-country skiing. Okay. That's her first individual medal. She has okay. uh, a couple from earlier on as uh, part of a team. But this was her first, and she was very, very happy. So there's a lot of skiing events that I'm guessing Norway dominates. And it was also a tough one because the conditions up here at 1,700 meters above sea level and very cold and dry snow. Oh. So it was really an achievement, and we were very happy. And we had a big celebration in the Olympic Village, huh. where we ate muffins. That's a lot of energy, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, having said that, though, have you noticed the enthusiasm from the Chinese about winter sports? Yeah, I have, I have not been to China for quite a few years now because of the restrictions, so I have not been able to see the, the development of the number of, uh, of uh, eager Chinese, but I've seen that. I'm guessing that China and athletes from China have gone in to Norway 
to ask Norway, hey, can you help us train our athletes? Because I'm Norway is so uh, dominant and so successful in the Winter Olympics. I'm guessing China wanted to figure out how they're doing that. So that's how this partnership kind of formed. That uh, this area that we are visiting now up in Sangsiaku, mm -hmm. wow. uh, we see that the Tai Wu Resort and the Genting Resort has developed tremendously. Wow. In the last three or four years, we have a great capacity to, uh, to uh, make... Yeah, see, does Norway have snowboarding? Because if I ever get to go to a mountain with snow or fake snow <laughs> in America, <laughs> usually fake snow, I snowboard, and some Americans snowboard, but I don't ever see snowboarding in Norway. Is that just not really as popular? It's possible for uh, sport to really use the ice and the snow, mm. and also the infrastructure Look at uh, that thing. with transportation and uh, the possibility to move from Beijing and up in the snow has developed a lot uh, only in the, uh, the last few years. So the it really should be possible to to even develop more of this enthusiasm for the mm. winter and the snow and the ice. With huh. only a few million people in the population, you managed to get the largest number of medals ever in Olympic history. Exactly. That's one. Of, that's probably one of the most impressive things about Norway and the Winter Olympics is compared to their population, how many medals they have. That does not even make sense how good they are. <laughs> I mean, Winter Olympics, many ask, is there some quote unquote secret remedies behind? <laughs> yeah. I've seen that uh, you have to make artificial snow because this is very, very dry in a very dry area of the world, yeah. of the globe. Uh -huh. But where we come from, the snow is falling from the, the sky and we have, can have up to four meters of snow in some of the regions of Norway. Wow, that is important, huh? That's such a good point. The geography and climate of Norway is one of the best in the world for winter sport training. Everywhere else, uh, countries, America and China, have to make a lot of fake snow, seriously, to be able to even do this. So that's a, that's a big advantage. So it's a, a little bit more like... Uh part of life to yeah. have the snow in the streets and even yeah. in Oslo you sometimes can go skiing in the parks of Oslo which is the capital of Norway mm -hmm. and many people in Norway have cabins up in the mountains where they can go skiing for wow. maybe six months a year what? and it's mostly natural snow and mm. that means that the kids are having a very natural relationship with the snow Right. Uh, so it's quite uh, easy to uh, get involved in sport as a kid in Norway. And it's yeah, it just seems like skiing and winter and snow is part of being Norwegian. It's part of the culture. That has a huge impact on how many Norwegians are going to be available and passionate about maybe becoming an athlete when they grow older. Quite common. Actually, at the age of 25, 93% of the youngsters of Norway has been involved in organized sports. What? <laughs> what? 93% of Norwegian kids have participated in sports? That's amazing. That's great. It means they're active. It's just like, I bet in America that is down to under 50%, probably. Wow. That means that nearly all of the population is a talent pool that and that gives us a good opportunity and if we manage yeah. to make this interesting and uh, uh, and give them a good feeling the youngsters then some of them really develops ambitions and really want to find out how good they can be at exactly exactly international level yeah. and that i think that is the secret wow that's it okay wow <laughs> I'm starting to understand why Norway is so freaking good at Winter Olympic sports. They obviously have the results. They, the amount of gold medals, the amount of medals total completely destroys any other country. 
even the United States, who's in second. And it's because Norway not only is a great place to grow up, to learn about winter sport and participate, but because on top of that, the way that it is taught to kids, the way that athletics is introduced to children and young people in Norway is so well done. So hands off, just fun, natural growth that a lot of kids in Norway have a great experience with it, which I feel like in other parts of the world, it's not like that at all. They don't have a good experience with sports because their parents pressure them, their coaches pressure them. There's all this expectation of being the best when you're just a little kid. No, 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 not in Norway. In Norway, they do it correctly. There's no expectations, it's for fun, it's uh, to introduce them and to grow, and then maybe later grow more. That is just, that is just so smart, so great. I love it. Just another great thing about Norway. My gosh. Wow. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this reaction, feel free to give it a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Norway, Norwegian culture, places, things that I've never seen before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.